Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to discuss an example involving the idea of differentiability of a function at a point. And if you consider this function here that's defined in a split type manner where a and b are numbers, we're actually asked to determine all the real values of these a and b that ensure the function is differentiable at x equals 1. So how do we do it? Well, firstly, differentiability is a desirable property of functions because the function will have or the graph of the function will have a smooth curve and a differentiable function behaves in a predictable manner. Now, we're going to have two parts to this solution. Um, essentially, the challenge is to define or choose numbers a and b such that we can piece these two parts together and make a nice smooth join at the point x equals 1. Now, to do that, we're going to have a two-part approach. The first part actually involves continuity because we know that a differentiable function must be continuous. So let's assume that our function is differentiable at x equals 1 and so f is also continuous at x equals 1. Now let's think back to the limit condition or the limit definition of continuity. Basically, the value of the function at x equals 1 has to equal the limit of the function as x approaches 1. So what we're going to do is work out the left-hand side and the right-hand side, make them equal, and then hopefully that will give us some insight into the values of a and b that we need. So. Let's consider f of 1. So if we go up to our definition, we see that, well, for x less than or equal to 1, f of x is ax plus b. So for x equals 1, we'll just have a plus b. Now, what about the, this right-hand side? Well, let's take the limit. Now, for this limit to exist, the, both the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit have to be equal. Now, I'm only going to take the right-hand limit there. And let's see what we come up with. Now, as x approaches 1 from the right, x is, of course, greater than 1. So our function would be defined in this way. Now, if I just take the limit in here, I'll get 10 pi on 4, which is just 1. Now, if I took the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, so we have a 1 minus 1 to the minus here instead of 1 to the plus, I would actually get a plus b. So I'm not going to do that again. But what we can do is to involve star and make these two things equal. So... We don't know what A and B are, but at least we have a relationship involving them now. Okay, so you can see that basically we assumed F was differentiable at the point in question and then invoked continuity. So how can we actually use just straight out differentiability? Well, let's do that in our second part. So since we assumed f is differentiable at x equals 1, we have the following. Well, think back to the limit definition of differentiability of a function at a point. Well, firstly,
the limit of this quotient has to exist, i.e. the left hand limit and the right hand limit have to be finite and equal. Okay, so we're going to use this relationship to form another equation involving A and B. So let's um, call this um, double star. Okay, now the left hand side of well, actually, let's do the right-hand side first. The right-hand side is, is actually easier. So let's take this limit here. All right, well, we we're approaching 0 from the left, so h is negative here. So 1 plus h is less than 1. So this would be my definition for f in that case. So... I'm going to get a 1 plus h in brackets plus b, so that's this term here, minus f of 1. So when x equals 1, this is going to be a plus b, all over h. So can I simplify that in some way? Well, if I expand the brackets, the a's will cancel out, the b's will cancel out, and I'll actually get a h all over h, and I can cancel the h's out. So actually, this limit, although it looks complicated, is a. So that was pretty easy. Now, the limit here is more involved. So the left-hand side of double star. Okay, so h is approaching zero from the right, so h must be positive. So 1 plus h must be greater than 1. So we'll be using this part of the function here. So Okay, so this is still f of 1. Okay, so it's looking a bit messy, but I can actually simplify this by going back to part A and remembering that A plus B equals 1. So I can replace this with just 1. Now, if I naively try to take the limit, top and bottom, well, this will give me 10 of pi on 4, which is 1. So I'll get 1 minus 1 on the top, and I'll, which is 0. And I'll get 0 on the bottom. 0 over 0, well, it's an indeterminate form. So what I can do, hopefully, is apply Le Hopital's rule, and that will then give me a limit, uh, an answer for my limit. So I'm going to abuse the notation here and write 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. And so we will apply Le Hopital's rule and see if that gets us anywhere. Now of course for Le Hopital's rule what you do is you differentiate the top, 
you differentiate the bottom independently of each other and then retake the limit. So, so let's differentiate the top, differentiate the bottom. Well, the bottom is very easy. We'll get 1 down the bottom. Up the top, well, tan will go to sec squared, and a factor of pi on 4 will come to the front. Okay, so now hopefully I can retake my limit and I'll get an answer here. Well, if I take my limit, I'll get 0 for h here, so I'll get pi on 4 sec squared pi on 4. Now if you work this out, it will just be pi on 2. Okay, so what have we accomplished there? Well, the right hand side of double star we calculated to be a. The left hand side of double star is pi on 2. So we, we know now that a must be equal to pi on 2. So we now have a value for A. And if we go back to our earlier part A, A plus B equals 1, well if A equals pi on 2, B must equal 1 minus pi on 2. So we found both the values of A and B that forces F to be differentiable and X equals 1.